Hi everyone, welcome back to the Females in Motorsport podcast. Today we have a very special guest with us, Tony Breidinger, um, who I have been trying to just speak with for so long because I absolutely love that she has been doing for the female racing community as well as the fan community. So Tony, thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you for having me on. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm so excited that you were able to make the time because I know the season has finally ended, but yep. you know, I feel like a racing driver's job never ends. So I'm really happy that you could make the time today. Um, so I kind of wanted to start from the beginning. How did your journey as a racing driver begin in the first place? Yeah, so I started racing go-karts when I was nine years old with my twin sister, Annie. Purely just for fun, my dad saw a sign going to work one day for go-kart classes at Sonoma Raceway and just thought, you know, like, hey, we have an off weekend. Might as well just, you know, take, you know, me and my sister to try it out. We both fell in love with it. And from that day, I told my dad that I want my own go-kart, begged him for it, and that I wanted to be a race car driver. So, um, yeah, it's kind of funny because I really knew nothing about racing before that. And I feel like just that one moment of trying something new just unlocked this whole this whole thing for me so yeah I love that your dad did that knowing that he had two girls because I've heard from a lot of other racing drivers that sometimes you know they even with parents like you know of course they they don't mean to always have some stereotypes in mind but sometimes you yeah. always think that karting is is for boys you don't think it's for girls so I love that your dad was just like yeah I have two girls and you guys should just go karting yeah yeah my parents have always been just the type of parents to tell me that I could go achieve anything if I wanted like I never had because everyone's like oh how did you have like the confidence to just you know get into racing or I'm like I've always just had the belief that I could pursue anything and I definitely think that's um personally for myself but also you know my parents have really instilled that in me and they never told me like that I couldn't do anything so um yeah. they definitely gave me that confidence from a young age that, like if I wanted to go out and just you know pursue anything I could do it if I put hard work into it Absolutely. I love that. How would you say, you know, you have obviously, I think, kind of become like the unofficial face of women in motorsport. Um, I think, you know, of course, your social content is a big part of it. But also you have these amazing partnerships with Victoria's Secret, Hot Wheels. And obviously you've had an incredible season actually this year specifically. How do you think, you know, your social content kind of helped did you think do you think it helped kind of maneuver your career at all or did you just do it as like a fun thing and it just happened by chance I've always loved social media but I definitely do think you know it's a great tool for me to use to help you know attract a fan base and um you know representation and getting sponsors so yeah I mean I love it and it's something that I've always enjoyed doing but I do think it's um you know a big part of you know, how I've got my sponsors. And I just think like even just growing my fan base, I feel like I've been able to reach such a large audience and diverse audience. So um, I love it. I mean, obviously, there's some bad sides to social media. But I mean, I love <laughs> it and I feel like I'm on it constantly. So <laughs> yeah, well, that was maybe my second question, because I feel like social media as much as I I'm the same, right? Like, obviously, working with females in motorsport, I'm very close to the social media and social channels aspect of it. But you know, it can get a little bit disheartening sometimes when you get negative comments or anything like that. Do you think you still deal with that? Do you still get negative comments? And is it even if, you know, even though you've been in the space for a while, is it still a challenge? Yeah, definitely. And I think it's always going to be a challenge. I mean, I think, you know, I see it on other, you know, female athletes pages. And I mean, everyone gets hate comments, I feel like. But um, yeah, I feel like there's always just going to be those stereotypes and you just can't win with some people. I think even you can go out and win a race and they're going to say, oh, it was just by luck or, you know, they'll always have something to say. So, I mean, it's hard for me because I feel like I'm such a people pleaser and I want to make everybody happy and I just want everybody to be like happy and friendly, um, but it's not always going to be like that. So, I mean, for me, I have so many amazing fans that, you know, flood my comment sections with like amazing comments and they're very supportive, but it is hard because I feel like you read that one negative comment and you know, it sucks, but it kind of sticks with you a little bit more than all the positive ones. So. Yeah, absolutely. I, and I think that's just kind of the name of the game with social mm -hmm. media. You know, you can't really help it sometimes, but I like to hear that, no, you're able to deal with it in a more positive way because it can impact people in a very negative way sometimes. Um, but my question is, how do you balance mm -hmm. your social content with your very intense race schedule? Because you're racing in multiple series at once. 
balance. Yeah, definitely. It's hard to balance everything. It's something that I still work on, you know, every day, just even my schedule between, you know, training, racing, uh, social media, just all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think for me, you know, I'll, I'm the type of person I love getting to places early. So I'll get to the track or to the race early, knock out a lot of content like early on. And then I have like, once the day kind of starts, like I'm more focused on the racing aspect. So I try to like separate it so I don't have to keep switching my mind in between. I try to get into like my race mode and focus. And I feel like I almost like change personalities. I'm like a little bit more dry, just really focused. Um, so yeah, I mean, we'll do some content in between throughout the day. But yeah, for me, just kind of like sectioning out my day, like, okay, I'm going to show up, you know, knock some content out and then just zone in on the race and what my team needs from me. Um, Cause yeah, sometimes it's hard. You have to be in a million places at once. So yeah, I can only imagine. I'm only doing social content when I'm on a racetrack and even that stresses me out. Yeah. <laughs> so I can only imagine. Um, now I want to talk about your partnership with Victoria's Secret. I know Victoria's Secret has been one of your brand sponsors for a while, but this year I think it really took it to a whole new level and you were able to join the tour, which is fantastic. So I want to know from you first, how did that partnership come about in the first place? And then second, how was it this year just being working so closely with the brand? Yeah, so I did my first campaign with Victoria's Secret. I think it was like a little over a year ago now it came out um, and it was like my dream company to work with. I grew up, you know, wanting to be a VS model like so many other little girls and um yeah, it's definitely like one of those brands that I always kind of told myself, like, I want to work with that brand. And um, my team helped me like meet with the casting um, director for the brand. And we just had coffee one time. And like a few weeks later, they're like, Oh, like, we just thought of you for a campaign. And I raced Talladega the day before and then like took a flight literally right after racing at Talladega to go shoot that campaign. So it was like, so like polar opposite worlds. And it was like, one of the best weekends of my life. Um, so that's kind of how the relationship started. And, you know, um, once they kind of got talking with me, I kind of told them about, you know, racing and the sport, how, you know, so many females are underfunded. And um, it's really just hard to kind of break through in the sport into the next level. And I told them that I had this, you know, dream of making my debut in the NASCAR truck series. And they really wanted to get behind me and support me in that, which was so amazing. So just to be able to make a debut in the truck series, which was one dream, and then have Victoria's Secret on the car, it was like the most surreal weekend. And um, I got my 15th place finish, which was pretty good for my debut. So it was just such a dream weekend. And I feel like I just like, I love that. Can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> it's amazing. I love that. I love that you actually just started off as like a, you know, a smaller thing, just like a cup of coffee. And now, you know, look how far it's come. How yeah. is it this year just being part of the tour and all of that? Because I can tell you from the content signed and look absolutely beautiful, but I want to know from you, how did it just feel being in the room with so many other incredible women like yourself? Yeah. I mean, being part of the tour was such an amazing opportunity for me, such a dream come true. And the brand itself is so empowering to work with. And I love um, the tour itself was like, you got to learn about so many different cultures and cities um, and the diversity. And it was so amazing. Um, so I loved even just, you know, watching it after. Cause I, I shot my portion and I wasn't really able to see like the other girls outfits and like mm -hmm. learn about the other cities. Um, so watching it for me was really exciting as well. Um, but yeah, it was, it was amazing. I mean, I, I can't like speak, speak highly enough about the brand. So yeah, I love that. And I know you also have an amazing partnership with Hot Wheels. And yeah. how, how, how did that one come about? Yeah, so Hot Wheels, um, they've been amazing to be with and also such an iconic brand. Um, they're on my GR Cup car that I raced this year. And yeah, it's a kind of funny story because when I was younger, I used to play with Hot Wheels at the track, at the go-kart track with my little sister, and I'd go home and I'd play with my Barbie dolls. Um, <laughs> and it was like almost like living two different lives. Um, and I remember I did like a, I think like a little more like social media project with them. I met somebody from there and I kind of told them that story and how Hot Wheels was like a big part of my childhood growing up. And, you know, at the track I was doing that. And then when I went home, I was with my Barbie dolls. Um, so, Yeah. Again, just kind of like started the relationship off with them and it grew into something um, super cool. But yeah, I feel like all my partners are so supportive and amazing. And it's a lot of all the brands I work with, they're like genuinely like in my life or like something that I like actually love or grew up using. So um, yeah, it's all they're all so amazing to work with. I have to ask, are you a Gemini? 
I'm a cancer, so I'm a little sensitive really? sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I was only asking because you were like, I, you know, your, how you switch between like Hot Wheels and Barbie or like, mm-hmm. you know, social content versus racing. I'm like, you have this amazing dual personality and I feel like you might be a Gemini then. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, I'm a cancer. <laughs> I love that. I, my sister's actually a cancer. I'm a Capricorn and Capricorn and cancers are like supposed to be opposites, which I find really interesting. Yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> Um, so I also wanted to talk to you a little bit about NASCAR. So mm-hmm. I think, you know, knowing that NASCAR, unfortunately, has this negative perception about it, which I'll admit, even I used to have a negative perception about it when I first started watching motorsport. Mm-hmm. I always thought like, you know, I only want to watch Formula One and then I got into IndyCar. And then this year, more recently, I've started watching a little bit more of NASCAR. And I've realized that there's actually a lot of diversity in the sport. Mm-hmm. So and I know you've talked about, you know, someday maybe driving in Xfinity or, you know, a NASCAR series like that. Did you ever feel when you first started racing that NASCAR is not as welcoming or those stereotypes were true? Or did you also have to unlearn that? Yeah. So growing up in California, NASCAR was never like really big out there. So growing up, I didn't even really see myself racing in NASCAR. It just wasn't something that I really like knew much about it wasn't really something that was like really big where I was from and then when I was 15 years old I went to my first uh, short track or oval track race and kind of got introduced to that kind of like side of the world and I was like oh I love you know like the racing like the racing aspect of it and then I started kind of learning a little bit more about NASCAR and I was like oh like I kind of like started hearing like the stereotypes of it not being diverse and you know it's being a white male dominated sport Um, which it still is. There is a lot more diversity in the sport now. And I think, you know, they're doing a good job to kind of, um, they have like a diversity program. So um, I do feel like they are making that a priority, which is really cool to see. But um, but yeah, I do feel like there is still kind of like that stereotype and that stigma with it, um, which I don't think is entirely wrong to. um, But yeah, I mean, yeah, for me, I feel like NASCAR has been supportive of me and to see like that you know even besides drivers there's people behind the scenes that people don't see and there's more diversity coming through so yeah it's it's been cool to see you know I've haven't really been racing in NASCAR for that long but I feel like you know just from starting in go-karts and seeing like till now there's a lot more females joining motorsports um whether it's like as drivers mechanics crew chiefs um so it's it's been cool to see that's amazing. I I really like to hear that because a lot of people say the same thing to me that, of course, there's still, you know, you're not exactly where you want it to be, but they're still making inroads and maybe like more inroads than some other series. So that's also something that's really positive to hear. So I know right now, of course, you're doing more stock car racing and the truck series. And I know you kind of dabbled a little bit with open wheel with W series, mm-hmm. but do you think you would ever want to try out for the open wheel again or are you happy with what you're doing right now? Yeah, I always say that if there's four wheels on it, I'll race it. So <laughs> I, I mean, I'll race any type of motorsports. Um, I think for me right now, kind of focusing on like making it like through the NASCAR ladder systems kind of priority. Um, and I think, you know, once I get to where I want to be, then it's like a little bit easier to branch out. But I mean, I'll never turn down a ride. So I'll race yeah. anything. <laughs> I love that. I love that line that you said, I'll drive anything with four wheels on it. <laughs> I'm like two wheels, I don't know about my balance on that one, but. <laughs> yeah, fair. I recently started watching MotoGP as well. And oh my God. It's, it's so impressive. It's so impressive. I'm like, I don't know how you're doing this. It's yeah. amazing. Because they're like, like almost like touching the the track but they're it's not easy yes crazy. i think it's so yeah. wild yeah. <laughs> yeah i know um all right well before we wrap i want to do a little fun rapid fire with you where basically i'll ask you three fun questions some related to motorsports some not and then you just have to tell me the first thing that comes to your mind okay cool all right are you Good. ready yeah okay cool so question number one if you want a racing driver what career would you pursue? Ooh, okay. This is going to be hard for me to make this one word. Um, I've been wanting to race for so long, but I think something in like the fashion space could be really cool. Um, I had a little phase where I wanted to be a criminal investigator. I don't know if I would have pursued oh. that, but I had a little phase of that. Um, 
But yeah. <laughs> Wait, you know what? I can't remember who said this to me, but very recently someone said this to me as well that they wanted to be a spy or a detective. Yes, like I think it's so cool. That, and I think it was a driver who said that to me. So maybe yeah. there's something there. Yeah, like I don't know. I thought it'd be so interesting, but I also love like fashion and like marketing. I don't know. I feel like I have so many different passions. Yeah. But... I mean, I work in my main job is in fashion beauty PR yeah um so I, I do love it not gonna lie but I do see that now there's so many new fashion brands and beauty brands entering mm-hmm. the area that you know you never know maybe you could just balance them both you know exactly know. exactly yeah. <laughs> all right question number two what was your favorite subject in school Oh, okay. So the reason why I wanted to be a criminal investigator is I took a forensic class in school and I loved it. So that was my favorite class. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I, that's so cool that you had a forensics class. Yeah, it was really cool. It was in high school. Um, and yeah, I loved it. It was so cool. That's really cool. I've never heard that before. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and my last question is, what are you watching right now on TV? Ooh, I need to find a new show. The last show that I like actually like watched entirely was Euphoria. Um, and I love that show, but I haven't got anything else. So good. So good. I don't know, I know when the next season's coming out, but I'm waiting for that one. They said 2025, but I don't know. I'm hearing like, I'm, I think it's just like a little rumor, but it might get canceled. Stop. <laughs> oh, no. You have to be like, oh my gosh, an actual gasp. So Sorry. Good. You're a jump scare. Oh my gosh. No, literally. Oh my gosh. Wait. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This is, to- this is a rumor. Like, I don't know. It's unconfirmed. So if anybody's listening, like, don't come at me if that does come out. But I've heard that, like, there's some, like, internal problems or, like, with Sam Levinson. Oh my gosh. You said everything. So I don't know. But. Wow. Because I love Zendaya and I could just watch her in anything. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I know. I love her too. Yeah. stop oh my gosh that's wild okay yeah but that was my favorite show hopefully it doesn't get canceled that'd be so sad yeah, fingers crossed <laughs> but i i literally i always say that i i watch t- if i was not doing motorsport things on the side i would be watching tv so yeah. i'll send you some recommendations yes please i need more recommendations now that's my off season i feel like i have a little more time for yeah watching yeah. shows so <laughs> yeah totally fair well thank you so much Tony, for joining me this was such a fun little quick chat um, I had such a blast just getting to know you and I hope we get to see each other in person sometime very soon yeah definitely that would be amazing I appreciate you having me on yeah of course thanks thank you